Welcome to Integrate Online, presented by the West Virginia University Reed College of Media, which offers renowned online master's degree programs in marketing communications. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, today we are kicking off the Integrate Online Career Boost series with a workshop on building your portfolio site with Aaron Fields and Nathan Perrot. <clears throat> Aaron. Erin is a graduate assistant at WVU and a current student in the IMC program, and Nathan is the head of marketing at Swipe By, as well as an instructor for the IMC program and an alum. Please be sure to keep your mics muted for the session and send questions in the chat feature. Erin is going to start us off. All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. I am so excited to be able to be given this opportunity and chat at today's Integrate session. As Stephanie mentioned earlier, my name is Erin Fields and I am originally from the most northern part of West Virginia that you can get. Um, seriously, if you go any more north, you are in Ohio. If you go any more east, you're in Pennsylvania. Um, but the cool part about my area is that my area is home to the world's largest teapot, which is super cool. Yes, we are proud, absolutely. And do we have a Tay in town that is devoted to this massive teapot? Also, absolutely. And if you don't believe me that it really exists and that's a real picture, you can feel free to look it up yourself because it's pretty awesome. Anyway, I did my undergraduate degree at Marshall University in Huntington, West Virginia, and then decided to travel back up north to complete my master's degree in IMC from WVU, and that is when I accepted a graduate assistant position in the WVU Office of Graduate Admissions and Recruitment, where I have worked for the last year. So today I am here to talk to you about why it is important to build and maintain a portfolio during your time specifically as a student if you're like me and I will give you a few platform options that I have used to make an electronic portfolio and also what kind of content you can choose to put, put, put in your portfolio if you are a student. So without further ado, let's kick it. So first of all, we need to ask ourselves why portfolios are important and why we need to continuously be updating them. Well, by invest, investing your time and resources into building a portfolio, you are able to give potential employers not just an idea of what you can do, but actual proof of what you can do and how well you are capable of doing it. When you have a resume, you are telling the other people what you can do, but think about how much weight your resume can hold if you add a portfolio onto that by showing what you can supposedly say you can do. A resume says, this is what I can do, but a portfolio says, this is what I can do, and let me show you what I can do. It kind of sort of reminds me of when we are little kids and we have show and tell days at school in elementary school or preschool. My parents used to tell my older brother and I the story from whenever we were younger. He was in preschool and I was about a newborn baby. Um, and the class was having a show and tell that week and he told all of his friends that he was bringing his newborn baby sister into the class to show them. And you know, of course, some of the kids are like, very skeptical, skeptical and um, not believing him. And then some kids would have believed him if he would have said he was bringing the planet Mars to uh, show and tell. But lo and behold, the very next day was my unofficial day at preschool with my brother for show and tell. So he told his classmates that he was bringing me for show and tell and then he actually showed them. So be proud of what you do and be proud of what you have accomplished to put that in for your portfolio. As I said here, strut your stuff and celebrate your own personal victories. And so moving along, building a portfolio allows you to be seen by others. This is one of the main reasons for building a portfolio. Make a statement and be confident in that statement. Show your versatility and mix it up with your full range of capabilities on display. I think when initially making your portfolio and starting out, it's really easy to tend to look at your portfolio piece by piece. But 
Personally, I would advise you to instead look at your portfolio as a big picture as a whole. This will help you present your best work that fits into your overarching brand personality that you are trying to sell to others. Think to yourself, does this work represent the person that I am and the person that I aspire to be? Building a portfolio allows your personal brand to be seen among the noise. Additionally, building a portfolio allows you to be heard. Before you start, it is really important to think about what you want your portfolio to say about you and your own personal brand. What story do you want to tell when someone looks at it? Remind yourself of your end goal and the impression that you want your portfolio to have before you even begin starting it. With there being a huge pool of students out there searching around in the job market, it's really crucial that you differentiate yourself from others. You can be heard in a variety of ways that molds to your own personal strength. For example, if you're a talented writer, start a blog and write about almost anything. Don't just write about what's going on your, in your career, but also write about things that interest you. What makes you who you are? If you check out my online portfolio, you'll see that I just recently published a new blog post a few days about my hobby of collecting vinyl records. And that has nothing to do with marketing or my job, but that has everything to do with me and what I like as a person. So really try to show your personality in your portfolio and let that shine through. Building a portfolio allows you to prepare yourself to maneuver the job market. And when on the job search, I have read time and time again how beneficial it is to take a form of your portfolio into job interviews, whether that is on your laptop or modifying it so that it fits in a physical binder. Whenever I first interviewed at the Office of Graduate Admissions at WVU, I turned my portfolio into a physical version in a binder that I was able to show my supervisor specific pieces of work while walking her through the process and experience of working on these projects. Think of it this way, you are a business of one. Your portfolio acts as a brochure for the services you are selling about yourself. By showcasing your skills, your abilities, and your achievements, your portfolio helps your employers clearly understand what you provide and why you are special. All in all, why are you worth it? Take a leap and make a strong impression. Provide some proof to the value that you claim and stand out from the competition. Lastly, building a portfolio allows you to learn and evolve in your career. I call portfolios a living document. It is supposed to change over time as you grow in your career. Like I said before, it is a direct personal reflection of who you are and what you can do. As a student, don't worry about not having all of the skills right off of the bat. You just need to get yourself off of the ground. You have a starting point that allows you to look back on how far you've come since you started. And sometimes as a student, this can be really encouraging because sometimes it's really hard to see you progress when you look at that progress one day at a time. You didn't graduate overnight, so don't expect to see some kind of absolute earth shattering transformation in your portfolio and your work either. Growing is a process, and as you go through life, you'll be thankful that you've been able to learn both inside and outside of the classroom along the way as a process. Have faith in what you create and absolutely love what you create. Leave your audience with something unforgettable about your portfolio and continuously look for ways to push yourself forward. So briefly, I'm just going to go over a few of these options that I have personally used in the past when I've made portfolios or other online projects. For my portfolio, I currently use Wix and I have really found that it's a really great option if you don't have much web or design experience or you need to quickly build and update your portfolio if you're on the go or really busy. Um, and don't want to make too much of a time investment into updating it. Wix takes really little time to learn how to navigate around because the software is practically just using a drag and drop software. So if you're a beginner and don't have much experience, I would definitely recommend something like Wix to use. The second platform that I've used in the past is WordPress, which is also a really great software. However, I would recommend using WordPress and checking this one out if you have more advanced knowledge of web and design. WordPress is a more powerful software than Wix, and so therefore, I like to think that it requires a little bit more technological knowledge than just being able to drag and drop content on your site. 
if you know how to code and are able to invest the time uh, in learning the WordPress software, I think this is a really great option because the system will allow you to have um, con full control and full flexibility to be able to create your site for what you want it to be. The third platform that I've used in the past, and I've actually used this one very recently, is called Squarespace. And um, I started using that when I started doing some freelance work for a client recently. And before the last six months, I honestly, if we're being honest, I hadn't heard of Squarespace before. Um, and I would say that honestly, after using it, it is a clean middle ground between Wix and WordPress as far as um, ability of technological, technological knowledge and all that kind of stuff. It has some of the same drag and drop features as Wix, but there's also more that you can do in Squarespace as far as versatility for your site. Um, I really enjoyed this one and I have found it having more of a modern style. Um, with it as far as templates and styles go. So if you are looking for those kind of vibes, I would definitely re recommend checking out Squarespace. Really easy to use, a lot like Wix. Um, all of these have free versions of the software that you can use, but know that there are paid plans available um, that allow you to do different things based on what you need and what you want on your portfolio or your website. And additionally, if you are interested in having your own unique domain that doesn't have the word Wix in it or any of that kind of stuff like WordPress, um, you will want to purchase something like that as well. So if you're a student, you probably haven't um, had as much of an established professional presence yet because you haven't had much time to gain experience. Uh, for that reason, sometimes finding content in, uh, to place in your portfolio can be very challenging. After making my portfolio, I realized that I have four suggestions for you, plus one more that isn't listed here because uh, that one's kind of entirely up to you whether you feel to invest the time in it or not. So the first one is to um, choose a few pieces of classwork or in pieces from internships that you've produced. This was personally really helpful for me when I was just graduating from undergrad because I had a lot of content from my senior capstone project and I also had a lot of content from my internship in the Marshall School of Music. So that was very helpful for me to try to get my uh, portfolio off the ground at first when I first graduated. And the second thing would be to choose um, to include innovative ideas that you've had throughout your time as a student. This could easily be a pitch from a mock marketing campaign that was created in a class. And I think that adding an aspect like this shows that employers that you have a uh, critical thinking thought process and a creative thought press process. And both, we all know that both of those things are very important in marketing and not just in marketing, but really anything that you go out into the world and do. And so the third would uh, be to include an activity or various activities that have shown great results and successful results. This could be an example um, of something that you had high involvement in that resulted directly in something like increased brand awareness, uh, increased brand loyalty, or increased sales. Uh, in my internship, the first thing that I thought of for this example was I worked on a recruitment campaign in the School of Music that focused on increasing student membership in the university marching band and increasing brand awareness across campus. And it was really awesome to work on. We increased our membership. It was really awesome. Um, the fourth year would be that you may choose to include a challenging activity of some sort. And this generally isn't something that a lot of people go to first to put in their portfolio. And a lot of people will refuse to put this in more, their portfolio because nobody really wants to showcase their failed attempts on things. Um, however, including a piece like this gives you the opportunity to be able to talk about perseverance and problem solving adaptability, and the ability to learn from your mistakes, which are all very important, as well as having your successes. Being able to admit that you have learned from something, from a challenge or a failure, shows that you um, just don't have a lot of, uh, you don't just have mental intelligence, but you also have emotional intelligence as well, which is very important in leadership. 
So the last one, like I said, is not on this slide because really it's up to you whether you want to invest the time in doing this and incorporate it into your portfolio. I think it's very beneficial is to, um, is to create just to create. And I got this advice when I was working on my senior capstone and I wish I would have gotten this advice like way before then because it's been so beneficial. Um, you know, if you don't have any pieces of work that align with a certain skill you want to show off, then create mock-ups of your own. Because I feel like there is some, like, un in students anyway, there is some unspoken stigma that if you don't create something on a professional, in a professional setting, that it can't be used in your portfolio. And that is not true at all. You know, if you're a graphic designer and you want to look into branding and you want to have skills in branding, then go make a mock rebrand of a brand. Uh, if you are a content marketer who wants to get into writing about a certain beat, then write about it just to write. Nobody is stopping you. Even if what you create isn't for a real life client, those samples are still powerful when wanting to showcase what you can do. And so for other students, my personal advice is just to simply never stop creating. There are always new concepts to learn and therefore there are always new concepts to apply. Seek out opportunities because nine times out of 10, those opportunities will not be handed to you on a silver platter and ready to go. When you seek out opportunities, you never know when that, where that connection is going to take you. And so I would like to end my portion with this short piece of wisdom that says, making a quality website is not as much of an expense, but, expense, but rather an investment. And so I just urge you to remember that um, however much you choose to invest in your portfolio will reflect ultimately on you and uh, your way to better position yourself for your future. So I wanna thank you guys again for having me and um, listening to me talk about my experience with my portfolio and how it can help um, both undergrad and graduate students. So thank you guys. And I will give it over to Nathan. Thank you, Aaron. Excellent, excellent job. You, I'm, I'm a little um, sheepish to show my presentation after the, the, the fun details that you put into yours. Great job, <clears throat> great advice. Um, let me share my screen, everybody, and we can, we can jump into uh, my presentation. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you all for this opportunity to talk to you about building your portfolio site. My name is Nathan Peratt. <clears throat> Stephanie uh, did a good introduction. I, um, I work in, in, I've worked in the creative industry for the last 20 years. Um, I have worked for big agencies like the Marketing Arm and Epsilon with clients like Frito-Lay and AT&T. Um, I currently work as head of marketing for a startup called SwipeBuy. And you can see that my headline down there says, I have been in your shoes. So I remember um, uh, very clearly uh, being in grad school uh, and even being in between jobs uh, and thinking about my body of work and wishing I had some, some counsel and advice at the time. So I'll do my best to give you some, some good suggestions. Portfolio design, as you think about your body of work and how you're going to organize it, you know, it's a living thing and you should always be looking at it and always updating it. And, um, you know, when you get a, when you get a job, I was at the marketing arm for three years. I didn't really think about my portfolio until I was ready to transition. And then I was scrambling, trying to find the work, trying to find the things I wanted to put into my, my body of work. So uh, my first piece of advice is as you are a student or as you're in your career, collect the things that you're proud of and, and make sure that you're updating your portfolio on a regular basis. It makes the process of building it a lot more uh, fun. So, um, I, I have three suggestions for you on your portfolio in terms of um, what platform to use. Uh, Medium, LinkedIn, and Adobe Portfolio. Um, if you're not familiar with, uh, each one is distinct in their style. Each one has a different approach in terms of skill set, what you would need. All of them are, you don't have to be a, an expert to use these platforms at all. Uh, they're, they're pretty easy. Um, so my first suggestion is to explore the platforms that are out there. Aaron just did a good job of, if you want to build your own website, Wix, Squarespace, and WordPress are definitely uh, platforms to use. I've used all of those. Uh, I'm not a web designer. I find the web design process to be cumbersome and painful and difficult. And I, I just drives me nuts. 
um, mostly because of how organized you have to be, and I'm not necessarily an organized person. Um, so Medium and LinkedIn and, and Adobe Portfolio are a little more plug and play, uh, which is right up my alley. So Medium, if you're not familiar with Medium, uh, you should check it out. It's, it's really for writers and, I'm, and content creators, right? People who, who have a point of view and want to share it. If you are going into marketing uh, and, and in this industry, you should have a strong point of view. You should be sharing your thoughts and your ideas. Become uh, skilled at being articulate. Become skilled at sharing your message quickly um, and um, clearly, and you'll be successful in the business. Uh, so where, what I have on my screen here is this young lady, Kat, Mar I'm going to try and say her last name, Mariboa. She hacked Medium to show her actual body of creative work. And I think we can share this at the end of the presentation, and there's a link to it. But she basically has 60, six posts in a row of all her key projects. And it's not just writing. Medium is really a, a platform for writers, but she's kind of a hybrid. She does writing. She does design. She does lots of different things. I believe someone just posted a question about that. And so instead of paying Squarespace a bunch of money every month, she just jumped on Medium and hacked it, as she called it, and um, was able to show her work in that form. And then I'm assuming when she sends out resumes and sends out applications, she's sending a link to this, to this platform. I liked how creative that is, and I liked how kind of bootstrap and quick that is. Um, it, it probably didn't take her that much time and medium is a pretty successful platform in terms of plug and play and just dropping in your content. So I suggest you, you look that over if you're interested in an easy platform and especially if you're a writer. Uh, LinkedIn is an obvious, obvious piece. Um, and hopefully you're all using it and leveraging it to begin with. I just want to reinforce how powerful of a tool that is. You know, it allows you to share photos, infographics, eBooks, blogs. It's connected to SlideShare. If you're in the program, you're going to have to build decks every class, almost every class. You're building a final presentation, probably. You want to put that up on SlideShare, potentially share that on your LinkedIn um, uh, platform so that potential employers and networks can see your skill set. And, you know, they're, they're going to this platform and checking you out. They're going to this platform and seeing uh, what you have and, and what you share. And like Aaron said, there is a stigma to sharing student work. And I, I agree, you need to have caution on what student work you share, but it's okay to share it if it's good and if you're proud of it. Um, so I would, I would strongly recommend keeping your, um, whether you're on Medium or whether you're on uh, LinkedIn, you're feeding that platform information over X amount of time, every month, every two months, you've got something new to share. It shows you're relevant. It shows that you're active in the industry or that you're an active creative mind who uh, enjoys uh, sharing content. And that's what, that's the business we're in. So I strongly recommend if you don't have um, a, a, a cadence to your LinkedIn that you consider that. The third platform then is Portfolio, Adobe Portfolio. Uh, this, is, this is where I have my site. I'll show you, I'll switch to that, that in just a second and show you the back end. It's $10 a month. And if you're a creative, so if you actually have a design, you, know, you need a designer portfolio and you wanna show your creative work um, and you don't wanna take the time to build your own site, um, Adobe Portfolio is a great solution. Um, let me click over here and show you. So this is the back end of Adobe Portfolio. You can see that I have, I've, I've attempted a few different sites here. And then my, my official site says published. So it gives you the option to build drafts. And then you can go in there. I'll show you this draft and why I didn't go with it. <clears throat> so I click in there. You've got this great, you know, WYSIWYG. You know, all the, all the stuff that you need to do is over here, right? And they make it very simple. It's not hard. If you know Adobe, you'll know this, this platform. Um, and it's, it's very simple to drop, drop it in. They have different templates and themes to use. And you can see here that I use, I thought about using this template where I have all these pictures of my work and you scroll over it and there's a name and I've, uh, did not go with this. I call this mystery meat. You don't want to make your portfolio mystery meat. Mystery meat means you're making people guess what is actually in the content. They're only going to give you about 30 seconds, if that, when they get to your site. And so the more clarity that you can provide to the organization of your, of your portfolio, the better. You can, you can do this if you want, but just recognize that there's a barrier of understanding what exactly you're trying to show them. And as you build your portfolio, clarity is key. So um, let me click out. Um, 
let's see. This is, so I decided to go with a very simple grid. In my grid, I have my work, you know, the work, boom, my big ideas, creative direction, uh, digital customer journey work, extras, packaging, and store branding, right? I click on that. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm saying way too much in terms of copy on this design. They're not gonna read all this. But sometimes you need to share what you wanna share. Like it's okay to be too, too verbose, but make sure you take the time to, to edit and to continue to refine what copy you put in here. The goal is to explain what's going on. So this big idea is, is I spend time on a crowdsourcing platform and I come up with big ideas for big brands. And so I'm trying to give them a snippet of what I worked on and why the ideas were successful, but it may be too much. And so I'm constantly refining this page. Um, but I love Adobe uh, portfolio. It's very simple. It's very easy. And it's only $10 a month. And I can write that off as a business expense. And it's, it's, it's just super easy. Um, let me go back to presentation. I, I, and I haven't had any problems with it. I haven't had any bugs with it. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, and it's been, it's just been a good tool. Okay. So those are the three platforms. I want to give you some advice on, um, how to go about the process, you know, the process of creating your portfolio and, and what might help you as you think through your work. And I have three steps. Uh, the first step is to find a mentor or a friend to help you think through your work. So I, uh, I'm a classic creative and, and massively dyslexic and you will always find errors in my work. Um, I just can't, my eye doesn't see them. So I have learned that I have to run my work by a friend if I'm doing it on my own. Of course, in the industry, you have project managers and, and writers and, and colleagues that'll help fix the errors. But when you're doing it on your own and building your own portfolio is a solo, kind of a solo thing, right? It's up to you and what you do and how you do it. And uh, you need to connect with a friend or a mentor to help you think through what's going on, to give you encouragement, to give you honest feedback, to find the errors. And I don't know about you, but with me, even, 20 years into the industry, I lost my job last May and, I, and I'm relatively successful creative, I found myself in a very insecure place. And so I had to reach out to friends, share my work, help them think through what I should show, what I shouldn't show. And it's, it's just really valuable to surround yourself with people that, you, that respect you and that are for you as you build your body of work. It'll make the process a lot easier. And that's probably the best advice I'll give you today. Um, so you've got your mentor. Now you've got to audit the work and do the work. So I have a lot of colleagues that don't have personal portfolios because it's just too much work, right? You have a full-time job, you've got kids, you've got school. How are you going to find the time to sit down and build your portfolio? And so a lot of us just don't do it. And um, it is a lot of work and you, you have to make the commitment. Um, and once you make the commitment, one thing, the filters that I try to use and when I have students ask is, you need to be proud of the work. So that's the first thing. When you look at the work, are you proud of it? If you don't like it, they're not going to like it either. So make sure you're not just throwing things up there because it's a student project and you have nothing else to show. Like fix the project so that you're proud of it, right? If you don't have work that you're proud of, do the work and tweak it so that you're proud of it. Uh, the second thing is you need to make sure you can tell a good story about your work. So any, any project that I have on my site, let me get flip back here on, on whoa, uh, yeah, it doesn't like my, doesn't like me bouncing around here. Um, any, any project I have on my site, I can tell a story about it. If someone asks me, tell me about Wendy's, tell me about Doritos, tell me about Balfour, tell me about that project. I know what I'm going to say because I've been very careful in picking solutions that I can tell a story about my process, about a client that was a nightmare and how we got through it, about, um, obstacles that got in the way from a production standpoint. There's, there's lots of different um, elements that you, can, that you can tell a story around your work that shows you're a strategic thinker, you are a problem solver, you're creative, you can handle stress, you, you, know, you can deal with changes, you've got a good attitude, like you wanna be able to tell stories around your work. So if you're looking at your work and you can't tell the story, don't pick the solution until you can tell the story. It doesn't have to be robust. You can have, you can have different stories, you know, more than one story around a piece, but make sure you're ready to answer that question. Or, or when they ask you about it, you have something to share. Uh, not just this was student work. Um, the last thing is uh, it has quality execution. So 
this is where a mentor can come into play. This is kind of subjective, but you need to make sure that what you're showing and what you've written is as close to industry standards as possible. So if there is a spelling error or there is some poor Photoshop work, or it, it's just a little off in terms of the creative execution, don't show it until you fix it. They're gonna see it and they're really looking at you to be creative and also have an eye for those details. You need, you need to show that you understand what quality is at an industry standard and all you need to do is look at, you know, go to Ad Weekly or uh, Ad Age or the industry um, resources and, and cross check your work against it. It doesn't have to necessarily be top, top end, but it needs to be in the ballpark. So those are the three factors as you select your work, what I recommend you think about. Um, and then as you organize your work, I recommend that you have two categories. You have your best work, team A, and then you have the bench, right? Almost best work. So you may have 20 projects, you may have 10 projects, you may have five projects. Go through it and say, I know that this work is good. You cross-checked it against your proud, good story execution. I've got five pieces I'm really proud of. And then I've got these seven pieces that are on the B team that I'm, I'm pretty proud of and, and begin to categorize those in terms of the relevance and the, the quality. And then you're gonna be able to decide where to put those in, in your portfolio. Uh, you don't have to have a lot of work. You just have to have quality work, right? I don't think that you have to have a ton of projects. Uh, they're not gonna see them all. They're not gonna look at them all. They're just gonna look at a few, they're gonna get the vibe and then they're gonna give you a call or, or move on to the next candidate. The other thing I suggest is you order by organize by relevance. So what that means is if you know you want to go work for the, the Penguins hockey team, make sure your body of work is tweaked to talk to those guys. And even if that means you got to get on the site on a Sunday night, tweak your portfolio before you send your resume so that when they get there, the first thing they see is a sports related content. Like be your portfolio is a living thing. It's a weapon for you to use to get in front in the front of the line, right? To 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 make a to make some noise so that they they pay attention. If you and if you've taken the time to make your portfolio relevant, then uh, you're you're that much more attractive to them. That 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 shows strategy, it shows strategic thinking. If you've organized your work into A team and B team based on your priorities, based on your career goals, based on who you want to work for, it's not hard to drag and drop and move things around. But if you don't do the work on the front end, so all of this is done before you even pick a platform. Like you, you just spend a couple days thinking through, here's all my work, here's what I need to fix. I'm gonna get this done by the end of the week. I'm gonna get that done by the end of next week. I'm gonna pick a platform by the third week. Portfolio will be up on, on, uh, on by the end of the month. You don't have to necessarily organize your, you don't need to organize your work around the platform. The platform will fit. You, you'll, you'll then be able to make a good choice. And you may wanna leverage your own portfolio site and LinkedIn and media. Maybe you're on all three because you've got enough content and you can organize those. At that point, you're pretty muscular, right? You're showing, man, you're playing on all kinds of platforms and, and, uh, and uh, which would make you a pretty um, uh, above the fold kind of person. Um, and, and not many people do that. So that's my recommendation on audit the work, do the work. It's not easy. Uh, it's hard, uh, but it should be a lot of fun because, you know, as you, as you build it, you're thinking about your future, you're thinking about your career, um, and uh, it, it will result in a positive, it, it will make a difference if you come to the table with a well-organized, thought-through uh, portfolio. Um, so I, you know, speaking of the details, right, I had a third, I had another page that said, check the details, hit the details, clarity and creativity, and somehow it's gone. So where, where I was gonna go with clarity equals creativity, you know, as, as marketers and as creatives, there's always this desire to, to put in lots of creative elements and, and to, to try and add lots of flourishes and, and design pieces. And I, that's good, but not at the cost of clarity. So think of, you know, in my preference, and as I've hired people and as I've looked for creative, I, I need it to be well organized and I need it to be very clear. And then where I see the creative is in the work you're sharing, not necessarily in the design of the site, if that makes sense. So using these Medium and, and LinkedIn and even Adobe, they've already done the work for you and they, they know that clarity and a crisp grid, no mystery meat type of, of uh, layouts uh, allows you to really focus on 
the work and not so much the creation and the design of the site, if that makes sense. If you're a strong programmer and you got web chops, well, by all means, throw in some great design elements. But my recommendation is to keep, keep, that, uh, keep it clear and then bring in the clarity of uh, creativity. So creativity first feels very good, feels very clean. Then if you feel like, well, it's kind of boring, okay, let's, let's try this, let's try that, but within reason. And don't spend a lot of time on it because the people hiring you, the HR managers and even the marketing managers, they're, they're, they, the creative's important, but it's the work they're gonna see. They're not necessarily gonna critique your site, if that makes sense. Uh, actually, if you have a site that is very busy and has lots of, it's hard to read and it's hard to understand and there's just a crap ton of content, that's gonna be a disadvantage to you. They're, they're gonna go, wow, this person doesn't know what they're good at. They're trying to put everything in here but the kitchen sink, that's not, I'm not, I don't want that from, a, from an employee standpoint. I need someone who knows how to make a decision and keep it clear. So um, it can be to your detriment if you come in with a very messy site. Again, that's why Adobe is giving you these strong grids and makes it easy. Um, the other suggestion on, on, um, on hit the details and, and clarity of creativity and our, our own um, uh, uh, Stephanie did a good job on her side is share a photo of yourself. So make sure you do make, you, you do add a personal touch to your site, whether that's in the about us page um, or whether that's uh, part of one of your pieces or your intro, always include a photo if you can, or some, something that makes it um, clear that they, they want to see you and, and they really want to understand uh, what you're about, your energy. Like what is the site design and the work and how you talk about yourself? What kind of energy does that give off? And are you, um, you know, and, and, and would, would they want to work with you? No one, no one, I think the, the rule of thumb is no one wants to work with a, with a jerk. So um, you want to make sure that your portfolio comes across as upbeat and positive and all the things that go along with that. So adding a personal touch, which is kind of hard to do. I, I hate sharing photos of myself. Um, it, 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 there's a little bit of vulnerability there, um, it, uh, but it's, I think it shows also, um, it's just a good touch uh, as I've noticed um, throughout, throughout my career. All right, so that was the summary. Uh, pick a platform that fits your work, find a mentor or a friend to help, audit the work, do the work, and then hit the details, clarity and creativity. You got LinkedIn, Medium, and Adobe uh, portfolio as uh, three good options along with what Aaron shared. So I, we've got about 20 minutes for questions and I'm sure Aaron and I can find other things to talk about if we need to fill the time. I hope that's helpful. Oh, I'm gonna turn my camera off. Stop sharing. All right, so it looks like Lindsay, I'll just jump to me. Lindsay asked, any portfolio suggestions you, if you have both design and content marketing? In terms of platform? Um, design and content. My, my mind drifts to the two probably connect. And so the suggestion there is to just make sure you, you've got a good story behind each of them and start putting the pieces together. It may, it may be a little complex to, to, to Put the two i mean you could separate the portfolio into sections and say here's my design work and here's my content creation work and have two tabs um, at the top of the site if you wanted to do it that way um, platform wise uh, squarespace wix uh, wordpress are going to be able to help you do that adobe portfolio is going to be able to help you do that um, yeah that's nice that you have both i mean that's that's great. That's what people are looking for these days is someone who can do both. Um, how and where should you promote your portfolio and the content within it when you are job searching? So personally, anytime on my social media page, like on Twitter or like your LinkedIn, when it specifically asked you for a link or whatever to your website, 
I slap that baby right in there. So then anytime anybody who comes across to my personal page or my career page or whatever, they get led to that link. Additionally, um, anytime like in the actual job application process itself, um, anytime I have looked at a job application or applied for a job, there has always been a area to drop your portfolio link in there. And so that alone itself is an amazing reason to have the portfolio in the first place. So you have that to put there. And you, like I said, they're just not reading what you can supposedly do. Like you can say, yeah, this is what I do. This is how I did it. I, I agree. Yeah, I, you can't, if you're looking for work, you put it everywhere. Exactly. And if you have like a, if you have like a key project, so this isn't this isn't a bad idea. If you've applied for a job and haven't heard back from them, and you know one of your one of your projects hits exactly what they're looking for, like a, let's say it's sports, you want to get a sports job, and you got a sports piece, you haven't heard back from them, hit the recruiter again and and link to your specific sports project and say, hey, did you you know that's one I'm I'm really excited about this opportunity and want to make sure you saw this sports related project I'd, I'd be a great asset to your team and really just show your passion and it's okay to be aggressive um it's it really is okay to be aggressive it's um sometimes it can be misunderstood but most of the time it's a uh, uh they 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 like the passion they want that on their team i absolutely agree don't be scared to put yourself out there. Like I know it is at first like scary to think of putting yourself out there and your stuff and thinking, what are people going to think of this? Like, is this really as good as I think it is? Like we were talking about earlier, both of us, like if you love it and it's relevant and it's one of your best, put it out there and showcase it. Like don't be scared to put your first foot forward and like Nathan said, be aggressive. Uh, Leah asked, most of the design work I do is classified and I can't share it with people outside of my current company. How can I make a visual portfolio without directly show showing most of the designs? Should I just rely on senior capstone designs to fill my portfolio? No. <laughs> I would say, one, that stinks that you can't share your work. That's tough. Uh, you should definitely put your capstone in there, but if if you have time to perhaps build some things that are relevant to what you're doing at work to show some of those chops, maybe consider that. Like just build a couple pieces that show the show what you're doing at the office without the confidentiality piece. Um, if you're if you're a tenure, you know, if you're a seasoned designer, you've got some years under your belt, and and you are. Um, reaching out to new new positions, they're going to see that you've been a designer for X amount of years. And so you just need enough in your portfolio to show that you have those chops. And, and you probably don't need a lot. Maybe your capstone has a lot of those chops in there, but you'll just want to be very specific in how you share uh, your your backgrounds and say, hey, I can't, I can't share it, but here, here are the three examples that show I can do this, which is what your application is asking for. Like I can, I can check the boxes of what you're seeing because I've doing this way. So you may have to build some things on the side <clears throat> to, to show that. Uh, what are your thoughts about adding a video to your digital portfolio? If you, it's a must. Like if you, you need to show video, of some kind, if you have it, and if you don't have it, make your own videos. I mean, it's videos. It's the it's video is the future. Um, whether it's short clips for Instagram stories or Snap or you know TikToks, um, these these short clip videos and even long form videos are, aren't aren't going anywhere. So you need you need to show video. I don't know that it has to have like like don't think of your projects as um, as um, format specific. I have a video project that I want to show. Hopefully the video is connected to the campaign and you're able to show the campaign, which includes the video. 
or maybe it starts with the video. The cam we built a campaign for, uh, you know, dry cleaners. We did a video. We did some social, and we did this. And so when they see the project, they see all the pieces that you worked on, including video. Um, if you're heavy in video, then maybe you have a site, a piece, a site, part of the site just dedicated to all the different video that you've done. I've always taken the campaign approach because I've never met a marketer that's thought in just format. So they, have, they don't think in format, they think in campaign, they think across channels. Um, so. And the beautiful thing about technology today is that if you have a smartphone of any kind, you have access to create video. Like I just filmed a, on my iPhone right here, I just filmed a 30 second commercial for a local like sheriff campaign here in our county and it got tremendous reach and everything and that was just shot with my iPhone and I would say if you don't have much experience in video or you know I'm not you're saying I don't know if this is my thing or whatever you know honestly my experience with that is that I never I took one video production class in undergrad the rest I pretty much like taught myself and you just put yourself out there and you just say hey, I'm going to make it a goal to learn this. And I might not be good at it at first, but I'm going to see progress in myself and I'm going to teach myself this skill. And I'm going to go, like Nathan said, I'm going to go and find a mentor to help me with this skill. So the resources are there for you to, um, to be able to learn and continue to apply yourself to, um, to new and upcoming and, um, areas in marketing. You're, yeah, if you're in this program, you're being prepared to be able to manage a video project because video is about storytelling. Storytelling is about making sure the objectives are clear and you've got the CTA and all the things that go into a strong marketing campaign. So um, execution of video is very specific to certain software and certain techniques and, and that it's becoming much easier like Aaron just shared. Um, and you want to, you definitely want to try and play in it or look at it or stay on top of what's happening in, in the marketing world when it comes to video like TikTok. Um, and, and just, just continue to get exposure to it. We're working on a video project right now. I had bids from $10,000 to $3,000 to 1500 uh, for a two minute video. And it's, you know, 10,000 to 1500 is a big gap, right? And we're going to go with the 15 and it's going to be great. So there's just all, it's just a, it's just wild west when it comes to video still, in my opinion, in terms of costs and, and who does it and, and, who's, you know, just the, the need for it and how much you're going to pay for it. So um, it's fun. It's a fun part of the, it's fun. It's really been a fun addition to the marketing mix and um, you, you definitely want to be on top of it. Yep. Um, how do you handle projects or collaborate with other individuals on? My suggestion there is to own the project. This is a project that I did and we made the goal was to do these things and I worked with four other people and maybe tell a story around the positive and negatives of that experience. So they're really going to be interested in how you work with people and, and what you do with conflict, uh, how you take feedback. So if you've got a lot of um, group projects, it's to your advantage, but, but make sure that you profile and highlight, this is what I did. This, these were my, contributions to this and this was the headache this this guy was a total chump and we really had a hard time working through it and here's how here's how we got through it or we had great synergy and it was a, it was a great experience um so uh, yeah i would definitely just make it about you and then tell a story about the teamwork aspect Um, how does it work with posting a class project that is about a company? Do we need permission to post it, especially if we use their logo or our rebranding? No, always. What is that? What is that phrase? Ask for forgiveness. <laughs> I, you know, some companies get, get up. I, I have never in my career got yelled at for putting someone's work in my portfolio. So like, like my portfolio has Wendy's and Snickers and Arby's and I'm using their logos and I'm using ideas that I generated for their team, which weren't picked. I didn't ask them permission. I'm just doing it. I've never, I've never got my hand slapped. 
I, I don't think you need. It's nice that you're concerned. Um, I think you're, if you're going to run into any problems, the person on the other end is going to say, well, tell me about your relationship with Snickers. Like what's, what, what exactly is going on there? Um, but they're not going to be worried about copyright. You're, you're fine. Especially if it's a class project. I think you fall under some legal rule that students can, are allowed to share corporate uh, work as, 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 as long as you're not making money off of it and you're not profiting from it. Um, I think you're fine. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I have graphic design work on my portfolio that is along the same lines where I've just had an idea and I have applied it and I've put it out there because it was my work. And like Nathan said, nobody has ever come to me either. So um, I think he gave a lot of great points on that, Alexis. How important, how important are certifications, Adobe, LinkedIn, et cetera, what does that add to your portfolio? Well, my, my thought on certificates and, and taking additional classes, it's not really about, well, it's about your skill set. So if you've taken a cert, sort of certificate in Adobe software, you now feel more, um, uh, you know, more competent in that software. And that's, that's great because when, when it comes to it, they're going to ask you to do stuff and you're going to need to know how to do it. So if you're coming out of the program with just small, that's the problem with higher ed. And I've, I've taught for other schools tools. I've got taught for design tools. You, we only give you just a little taste and then, and then you have to kind of navigate the waters on your own. Certificates are put in place so that you can really solidify those skills. I remember my very first job for an agency and they asked me to do something in Photoshop and I, I just about lost my lunch. I had no idea how to do it. And I, I remember thinking, why don't I know how to do this? Well, you're not gonna, you're just not gonna know everything. And, and I figured it out. Um, uh, and since then I've taken some certifications, I've taken some classes on the side. You know, you're always, always learning, always playing. So if, if you've got a, a resume that says you have a degree from the University of West Virginia and you have three certificates from Adobe plus one, one or two from LinkedIn, what that tells me as an employer is this person's hungry. Like this person likes to learn. This person's a hard worker. They're spending their own time and money to get certs to, to become a strong, valuable asset. To, you know, and then maybe they're just doing it for their own personal gain. You know, their own, like, I have three degrees. I like to learn. I'm going to keep learning. And it's, it's what, what you do. So, uh, Victoria, you won't, um, you have to decide though, it's worth the time and money because they may not, some employers don't care. I mean, really it's, especially in agencies, it's like, show me your work. I don't care how you necessarily, how the sausage was made, how you learned the skill. I just want to see that you've actually applied it to content. Um, and if certificates allow you to get stronger in that area, so your work's even stronger, you should do it. Um, but you, but even if they don't like it, you're still better for it. I'm, I'm all for continuing education. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that certifications, like Nathan said, are a great way to keep yourself updated with things you, you might not be as familiar with. And from a student perspective, a lot, if, if you are active on social media with the industry and marketing, there are a lot of certifications that pop up from like reliable um, companies like, uh, there's been like, Hootsuite, there's been Site Improve. You can find a certification for probably anything that you are interested in marketing. A lot of times, those certifications are also free. So if there is a certification and it's reliable and it's free, take the time to better yourself and go through that certification. Right now, I'm working through the HubSpot ones and I feel like I have learned a lot about specifically content marketing. So I mean, anytime you get an opportunity to do one for free, I would highly suggest you to go and take that certification. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you it's a competitive market. Um, so, and the more you can show that you have certs or you are you doing extra things on the side, the better. It just it'll differentiate you. Maybe it maybe it may be the thing that that pushes them over the edge to go with you and not someone else. So yeah. Whether that's doing certificates or just having side projects like Aaron was talking about, you, you need to be you need to show that you're um, 
active and creative and they're almost as interested in your side projects as they are your student work because your side projects kind of shows your character it shows your personality it shows what you're into and they're very interested in that all right well i think we're just a few minutes from one so we're gonna wrap up um so thank you everyone for joining us and special thanks to Aaron and Nathan. Be sure to visit integrate.wvu.edu for upcoming sessions, including the next two Career Boost series sessions. Um, you can also view recordings of previous episodes and to subscribe to receive updates. Yeah, our pleasure. Thanks for inviting us. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, feel free to find us on LinkedIn and connect and if you want some advice on the side, hit me up. Happy to happy to share. <laughs>